Good morning, Soul Family. Welcome. It's a Soul Family Weekend Read for the 8th of October, uh, infamous year 2021. It's, it's weird. Can we just, I, can we say, I don't want to be controversial, but can we not say it's just fucking weird, man? I'm 60, almost two years old. I've, I've seen some weird stuff in my day. This takes the cake, man. I'll just leave it at that. It's like, it's uh, it's weird. I'm like Hunter S. Thompson said, you know, it never was weird enough for me, man. And I just want to be, uh, say, spirit. And I want I want to put it out there. It's plenty weird. I don't want any more weird. I'm good on the weird. Cut the weird. All right. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm a pretty weird dude. If I'm saying this, everyone should be worried. So I was thinking about the weekend reading, what to do uh, here, because uh, what felt right. And and then I thought, well, what am I going to call it? Well, it's like the Mars, Mercury, Sun conjunction uh, read, uh, which is on Sunday now. Um, and so I thought, like, I'm going to pull the three cards and kind of talk about, well, there's a, I guess you could say there's debate on exactly what might constitute Mercury and the Emperor. Um, you know, I was toying with the tower, but I, since I had a choice, I went with the magician for Mercury here. I'm going to use the uh, illuminated tarot deck here for this, and the Emperor for Mars. And I think that works. And then the Sun, you know, it's kind of like a no brainer. So, um, and then what I want to do is do pull three cards for each one. So I kind of call this a flower arrangement I've done before uh, where I just kind of uh, clarify cards with three cards like that and see what we get uh, for just the energies right now in general. I'm going to leave this pretty wide open. I'm already focusing on the planet. So, you know, I was thinking, you know, first of all, Mercury for me is uh, my chart ruler, um, Virgo Rising. So it has a lot of significance. Uh, it's also significantly aspected, square to Pluto, uh, Pluto and my AC, and uh, conjunct pretty closely to my IC. So um, it's, I would say, kind of a troubled Mercury to start with. Um, so uh, always retrograde Mercury's have an impact on me. Um, kind of talked about that some, that's a whole thing. Uh, this is not going to be about computers and X's. I'm talking uh, about the mind in here, uh, deep uh, aspects. So um, in all of this, except, well, the Mercury and Mars, uh, they're, these are major arcana, but in astrology, they're very personal energy, very personal planets. So um, uh, this is the mind and our communication. That's really what this represents. And with the magician... It's the ability to create with our minds and with our communication, create anything we want. That's what the magician means. It's a manifesto card too, you know, and that's a little bit different. I mean, the main thing about Mercury in astrology, it's the messenger and it works for this, becomes important in all this. Mercury works for the sun. Sun is the kingdom. Sun is the king, you know. Um, in ourselves and Mercury's job is to go out and gather information and it gets licensed to go anywhere and go to hell and leave and come back. It's the only one, you know, and report. And I, when I read a chart, it's like uh, what you're really looking at is one of the things, not really about intelligence, just how people think and how they function is how well aspected are, is Mercury and the sun in a given chart. And because that's going to help tell you the kind of relationship if the king it has a very good relationship with a very competent Mercury that gets back to the king with very good information, male or female, I'm talking here, um, then, you know, the king has a really good chance of uh, running a pretty good empire <laughs> or a good kingdom, you know. Um, and a lot of it hinges on little Mercury here. But, you know, Mercury's sloppy and uh, Sagittarius like mine. It's not, uh, you know, exalted in Virgo or something. Uh, maybe it comes back and gives the king <laughs> some bad tips. I laugh. I laugh at myself. Give the king some bad tips. Yeah, put all the money on three and spin it. You know, uh, no. So, but it. This is what's going on in the big picture. You know, and Mars is again the personal planet, and, it, and it's the you know the sun and Mars. It doesn't exactly represent the sun is bigger. It's everything. 
Uh, so Merc uh, Mars is an aspect of the sun. Of the sun is the self, the kingdom. But Mars is the aspect, and the emperor represents it here, of our will, our force, uh, ability to use force or not uh, use force. Um, the will of our self, our ego, big time, and sexual impulses and drives. Um, and also, another thing you look at is a hint in star charts, it's very basic. You just simply look at now how is Mars dispositioned in the chart relative to Mercury. And you want to add in Venus and the Moon. But all of these things are just relationships. And if someone's Mars is in good aspect with the competent Mercury that's in good aspect of the Sun, what is that? That's a person that whatever they need to do for themselves, they can think it through and then take action upon it very effectively, just as an example. Here you have the energy of conjunction, which I think is neutral, kind of depends on the energies. Um, but, um, you know, that thing when you combine chemicals, it creates something else is going on here. So there's all kind of synergy going on. Um, and then, to me, you have Mercury here. It's like uh, there's this parade. And with the sun and Mars, it's it's like by a military parade. But I mean, it's rocking, you know, it's like precise and it's getting attention, you know. Now here comes the Mercury going backwards, like some drunk has managed to get into the parade aisle and is walking backwards and just everybody's just all fucked up. A little, a little bit of that element to it um, with Mercury retrograding into this energy. But, you know, it, it's a little bit too like Mercury hitting a brick wall. Because you got Mars, which is the warrior, and backed up by the sun, which is kind of like everything. Um, it's a lot uh, for Mercury to deal with. And, you know, arguably it's better because they're all in Libra where everyone's trying to get along. God forbid they're in Aries. It would be like a uh, real, we could definitely look forward to fireworks, you know. Um, but here there'll be some jockeying for position. Now, uh, my read overall with uh, the situation right now, it transfers uh, uh, here at the same time, Saturn's uh, going to be uh, going back direct at 7 degrees Capricorn, Aquarius, 7 degrees Capricorn. It's exactly semi-sextile my uh, Saturn. Um, I get that. Um, so, but this energy here is about Mars, I think. And, you know, I feel like this is a time in the... The ego's not bad. Um, it's a whole thing with me, uh, sun square, um, the nodes, and um, I really, one of those people need to assert my ego more probably than less. Um, but this, nonetheless, this is where Mars wants to assert itself. I don't care if it's Libra or not. It's probably looking around and basically thinking through the relationships of things more than it would. It's not like Mars is not in Libra going, how can I get along with all these people and make them happy because, you know, that's all I care about is that they're, they like me. I don't think Mars is going to go that far, right? You know, Venus definitely would. Venus there is definitely, that's exactly what Venus is doing, exactly. Not Mars. Mars is like, you know, uh, how can I better understand these people so that I can smash my way through and get what the hell I want? And I think this is important. I'm a little bit kidding, but I think this is the time that we need to grab a hold of the helm of the ship and, you know, decide the next 20, 30 year cycle, where are we taking it? Where are we going? What do we want? What are, and it's really like, what, what, do, what do I want? What, do, what, do, what does it mean to be me? What does it mean to be human? What do I want out of life? All those deep, deep things. Because why not? Because if this next 20, 30 year cycle, what do you want to be about your debt uh, to ratio or something I mean you know um, and it, it's gonna be an amazing time I mean things are probably we're either gonna not be here or it's I think it's gonna get better but ima imagine right now the pop in the the tech and the medical I mean they can't like just can this up keep screwing us forever guys Aquarian age is coming man I mean, we're going to have, in 30 years, I think, imagine 30 years ago, even the things we have now, but it's accelerating. AIs are up and running. Once they start making each other, I mean, it's, uh, it's going to move really fast, you know. Um, so I think that's why it's important. Um, you know, it's not to be angry, and, but to be forceful and to really 
you know, get a little juices flowing and uh, show Saturn and Jupiter and the universe and all of them, you know, I'm, this is me and this is what I want. That's where I'm going, you know. Um, and then, you know, they can decide how to stand with you or against you on that, you know. But I just like it for the assertion right now. I like Mars. He's kind of become like my hero lately, which I, which I needed personally. I gotta have a coffee. It was so hard to put myself together today. So, physically. <clears throat> okay, so let's get three cards for our sun energy here. And I don't know where your sun is. Mine's a 25 Sag. And uh, the most significant thing in, in this on the 10th here at 16 degrees. It's a real close sextile to my Jupiter, natal Jupiter, which is in Sag. That's really good for me. Um, but with the Sun energy, the Queen of Cups, the Two of Pentacles, and the Empress, Jesus, that's powerful. You got the Queen of Cups and the Empress in here, okay? And I'm reading uh, off of the Sun here to kind of capture this energy. You gotta look at this in astrology too. Um, like I say, my sun's in jeopardy right now. I'm just in general in my chart. In transits, I'm looking good. Um, this is not looking bad uh, lately. Uh, Pluto's gonna uh, pose my moon here, and, and then that'll be gone by next year. That's my last mf -er of a transit. You know, but I think what we have here, this is us, you know, being the queen of cups. And I get that the empathic, the caring, understanding emotions, emotional intelligence. Um, and this is defining our sun. And then here we are. This is always to me, this energy of making things work, balancing things. It's also Virgo energy. It's a day-to-day -day energy, you know, taking care of business energy, all that that entails, you know. Like we just don't get to sit around like lumps and be like a plan, you know hate plants, you know, I'm so jealous, but yeah, we have to actually do this with our lives, but look at this with the Empress backing this up here, Venus energy, and um, this to me is saying that our son's in a really good position, and right now we're probably, this really impresses me, this two of pentacles, um, and the sun is the self, what we want and need, how we naturally want to express ourselves, and I would say that we're doing it. We're doing it. It's like it's taking some kind of effort, but we're doing it really well, like the Empress well. Here we have the Emperor. So the sun, you know, a little homage to the Emperor energy in Mars is showing up with the Empress here. I just noticed too. And this is going to bring to the mind, think, think the sun, light, light. And then it's going to give us even more will to take action what's really good about this is that when we take action we're going to tend to take it based upon this mercury energy coming and hitting in libra so it is good it's a less likely that the mars is going to go off half cocked and be unreasonable um so but but i feel like the whole thing is set up sun massively empowering mars Mercury now informing Mars. Mercury in retrograde, my feeling, is like they're passing, and already Mercury's messenger, and Mars is like, Mars, imagine. And you know, now, and look, you can see he's kind of looking down his nose, like looking down his nose at Mercury, like, you know. Um, so almost in the submissive role, uh, delivering everything to the sun. It's like download cities, I'm saying. This is why I want to do this reading. I think this time right here, this is another one of those key moments. And it's, this Mars is, I think, right in the center of it. And so it's a perfect time to get the clarity and take the forceful action. Forceful action will, could be things being done, Mars is action, uh, in our life that sets up the rest of our life. It, taking a class, moving, selling, buying, property, thinking long term. Um, setting up investments, work, you know, uh, serious things like de designing our life, you know. This is not the energy that you just sit around and go to work, come home, go to work, and watch never. 
this is like something if you're watching this reading you got this far something stirring man you know it this is a big fucking deal the next fucking 30 years is gonna rock it's the rest of my life but goddamn uh, there's no accidents that we're here you know now clarifying mars that i'm so uh talking about so much i'll get to uh the, oh hell I'm, i want to tell mars don't let it go to your head that would be dumb you know it's good to go to mars head it's his job you know it's like these dogs that bark incessantly don't blame them that's their job to bark at you when you go by so now mars is coming in with this eight of swords totally get that five of wands totally get that in the uh four of pentacles um, like I said, it is being calmed down. You know, Mars has got a lot on it. It's getting this information from Mercury, too. And it ain't all good. Uh, hello. Um, oh, God, I had a dream the other night about cowardice. You know, and I felt that. And it's like, damn, that was a real bad one. <laughs> you know, and it's coming in with all kind of stuff. Old stuff that's just, to me, it's like scraping it out, you know. But it's kind of, it can be kind of painful. You know, it's hard to keep saying I welcome it, but I do, I welcome it. In this five of wands with Mars, I mean, that's all Mars. And, you know, it, to me, this is kind of like Mars is holding back with the five of wands. You know, they're practicing, and five of wands, you know, it's not a real bad argument. Like, I think the five of swords is a lot worse. And it's like, so, but Mars is just like, come on, I'm ready, don't get, you know. And I think Mars is, is it's being very Martian right now. You know, uh, it's being as polite as it possibly can, you know, but it's still being Mars. You know, in the Four of Pentacles, it's containing itself right now. Mars. Whatever it is in your chart. You know, like I said, though, it's, it's, it's ready. It's ready to go. And it's all kind of empowered. And I think with this, uh, now Saturn's going forward. And, you know, Saturn always kind of seems to me is always against mars you know the, the that's your david and goliath the, the zodiac and um you know mars don't give a fuck about saturn you know but but it's like a little dog that doesn't know it's little you know it just will get eaten but it doesn't care you know um so it's not afraid it's absorbing this information from the mercury right here and then jupiter will be going direct too and a lot of planets and within two weeks maybe uh after this so um mars is i think gathering information it's it's examining the players being kind of scorpio it's uh assessing and but so that it can get what it wants so that it can do what it wants now what is that you're looking at your life and you're looking at your assets and your savings and your potential and your income streams and your, uh, you know, bills and put, well, can I do this? Can I sell this place and pay this and then uh, da, 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 and reduce that? I mean, it's these kind of things. I say, Marge, you're not going around like beating on people. But it's taking actions though it's taking money moving it it's moving a house it's changing your place you know changing your employment adding a job dropping a job um big things are being done starting a different course of uh, education or additional education or something um for this energy and mercury the magician mercury the manifester yeah and it kind of reminds me you kind of look kind of looks like a little spookish schoolboy, you know so imagine with mars but what mercury has to do as the magician is to whisper in mars's ear and get mars to do what mercury wants mars to do you know can't do it by force but you know by persuasion maybe manipulation Tell Mars a little bit what it wants to hear. Um, so I think that's going on too. Um, two of Cups, King of Swords, and the Death card. This is to now clarify out our magician here. And he is a he is a um, He's not going to go down lightly, even though I think with Mars going full direct with the sun right there, 
uh, Bride in the Sun, basically, Yippie ki um, it's It's just basically wants to ravage uh, Mercury for what it can give it, you know, and it's going to add that to what it's learning about everyone's weaknesses. Well, everyone thinks it's being so nice. It's just learn about where's your weaknesses so that when I'm ready, I can take you all down, you know. So, Two of Cups energy, King of Swords, and Death. Crazy getting that is basically your last card, Death. So, this is the energy um, of manifestation here with Mercury. Still got that on its mind, you know. Because um, this is a manifestation reading. And the Two of Cups is that energy. Um whatever it is we're wanting to manifest you know looking in it's uh we're manifesting is like the seventh house the anima animus the projection of what it is that we want you know uh, what we desire being a seventh house desire and the king of swords it's saying uh now the way we're going about this and the way mercury's going about this um very solid very mature this is not being you know mean or unkind or anything um this is you know like they say don't buy a house or i don't sign a contract during mercury retrograde well i wouldn't abide by that maybe if you could change it and it was only a week and it wasn't that big a deal maybe do it but just double check everything just double checking everything because this is someone that always double checks everything someone that takes things seriously uh thoughts and communication very seriously information very seriously the King of Swords can use information, can understand things. Uh, the King of Swords, uh, his power, male or female, uh, comes from information. Um, and again, where does the King get the information? From Mercury here. Um, and so it's like as Mercury's meeting Mars here on Sunday, maybe Mercury says very quietly, so as not to offend Mars too badly, you do realize, Mars, who I work for. And he doesn't say back to fuck off, but just kind of like, keep, you do realize who I work for, right? Because I work for the king. And the king of swords is exactly who we're talking about here. The part of the king, your part that's mental, that uh, wants information, can use information, that calculates uh, all the left brain stuff. That's basically what it amounts to. Um, and we end with transformation. Absolutely. So whatever's going on here, it's in the midst of a transformation. It's a manifestation in the midst of a transformation. And I want to tell you right now, that sounds like a mouthful, but I could be my book right now. <laughs> manifestation in the midst of transformation. I like it, you know. Uh, say it three times real fast. I'm not going to do it. Um, but yeah, I love it. So I love the way this turned out. Um, enjoy your weekend. Um, I think it's uh, uh, going to be a good weekend. It's still nice. Uh, hopefully where you are in Cancun, Mexico. So it's it's pretty nice here. It's not that hot. I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, guys.